Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Alan Smith, uh, Andy Simcox. I don't know why I'm doing that because they could be anywhere. It's Zoom. I never know whether they're to me left, me right, or backwards or forwards. Uh, and we've got um, John Simcox making his Red All Over debut. Andy's brought him in. Apparently, he's the, uh, he's the wiser son, so we thought we'd bring him in. How are you doing? You all right, John? I'm all right. I'm much nicer than me, Dad. You'll be pleased to know. Well, to be fair, if he gets us a couple of dislikes, if you can just try and get us a couple as well, then we'll be happy because, you know, that's what we live for. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, right. One, one thing that uh, ain't getting no dislikes is Barnsley at the minute. I mean, after Cardiff, uh, they were, but Derby, 2-0 win for the Reds in last game. I'll come to you first. I tell you what, that was um, a good result, that. Outstanding, wasn't it? Uh, we had two players back, didn't we? Collie Woodrow... And uh, Great Britain, and what a difference that makes to the side what uh, performed at Cardiff. Uh, and we were lucky enough to get a goalkeeper making a mistake and us scoring instead of the other way around, wasn't it? Chaplin to put that one away. Wow, surprised me. And then uh, second half, it brings uh, Adi Bojo on. And what a goal. And if we go down that goal... From picking it up inside their 18-yard box by Mads Anderson, played it out to Corley Woodrow, then put it to other substitute to come on, Harry Kane. Harry Kane to Chaplin, Chaplin across field to Harry Bioge. And when he drove, I thought, what, what's he going to do with it? What a curler. And then rushes straight over to uh, our new manager and uh, hugs him. Uh, I thought he couldn't hug during the coronavirus, but... What a fantastic performance. And only 29% of possession. Alan That's the best rules. You can hug if you score a worldie. That's what it is. You've got to check the guidelines. It's in the point. I'm joking. Please don't start hugging people if you start Smithy, scoring worldies. Smithy, there's no fool like an old fool. We've not signed Harry Kane. We've signed Herbie Kane. Harry Did Kane will play for us, Smithy. Oh, it's Herbie then. Sorry. Harry Grip, Smithy. Herbie, because, look, Herbie rides again. Show. It was close. It was Kane anyway. Not able. You want to show and you don't make sense yet again. Talk sense, lad. Right. First time we've won there, I'll get this one right, since yeah. September 2009. So that's right. how good a result it was. Right, listen to this, Joe. Before we go any further, right, as you know, because you, kind, you kindly roped me in to go on to that Gabriel Sutton's uh, EFL fan show, and, and I did, and I did. Did it this week with a Derby fan and what I'd like you. to say he gave you the opportunity he gave me the opportunity because I couldn't yeah. be bothered. But go on. I, I, think, I think you'll find that Gabriel wants me to be on it. I, I, I'm used to a better show now. Right. Ooh. So, just as I'm about to go on that, Smithy, Mr. Stato, Stato Smith, texts me and says, I've got a stat for you, but sure, I've got a stat. We haven't won it now. This is 2012. So, in front of 300, three, no, 3,500 views, I'm saying... My mate Smithy, and he'll not be wrong, because if Smithy's ever wrong, it's the end of the world as we know it. I'm saying we've not won there since 2012. So that's what I say. Three and a half thousand people have viewed it so far. And then as soon as I've done it, what does Smithy do? He then texts me and said, no, I got it wrong. It's 2009. <laughs> so I've lied. Fake news, Smith. Fake news. You like it? Fake news. Society. Yeah. Fake news. Fake news. We're in a fake news society. I'm only doing what's going round. You're, you're a and disgrace. Dave, you're supposed to be a statistician. Yeah. Trust, trust us, reliable journalists, not Alan yeah. Smith. <laughs> well, well, if, if Smithy says it, the, the world's ending as we know it. And you know what's happening in America? The world is definitely ending as we know it. Um, and it's all down to Smithy. I blame him. He's made me look a right fool in front, in front of all them people. A fool. And it's all down to Smithy. Thanks right, for that, man. Alan. You only get about 300 views on this, so it's not as bad if you get it wrong. Uh, John, so we've got you on the show. We might as well give you a chance to have a chat because these two never shut up, so I'm introducing you because if, you, if we keep going on like this, it'll be Andy and Alan talking all night. Um, what did you think to Derby then? Uh, like Alan said, great goal from, from Big Vic on second one and a uh, decent away performance for me. I'm trying to make sense of what I'm seeing because going back to Keith Hill, I'm so used to seeing us having 70% possession and then not having any shots. You know, it gets to half time, you've had one shot on goal. I'm thinking, have I just watched us playing like Barcelona or have I just watched us not having any kind of, you know, threat in the final third? And now it's kind of gone the other way around. So we've only got 30% possession and you're watching it thinking, you know, we're not really going to get anything out of this game, but actually, oh, we've just forced a chance. 
oh, we've just forced another chance. Oh, we've scored a goal. Oh, we're winning 2-0. And it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit weird. I don't really know what to think. So, I mean, obviously it's working because we've won three out of four. But if, you know, and maybe it's a new manager bounce a little bit. But if we, you know, if, if he's doing this well after four games and he refines it and he gets a couple of players in, another striker, you know, we're going to end up, you know, winning every game 4-0. Is this like the you know the future football tactic that everyone's going to be playing? It's genius. Well, we know, is that? He didn't tell him he got that giddy. He's only had four games in Mummy and Chad. And John's already <laughs> got him down as good as in Premier League and Champions League. Got him all he doesn't know. I do think I do think we were lucky against Watford. I don't think we deserve to win that, if I'm honest. I think they worked hard and they did well, you know, showed a lot of heart, but if realistically speaking, I think we were a bit jammy against them. So I think Maybe two out of four would have been a fair result, but we deserve to win on, on Saturday. I think, we, uh, I think we played really, really well. Yeah, and I wanted to talk about that man, Callum Britton, because it's hard to decide who to get man at match to, but I think Britton just got it for me. When we talked about, on a few shows ago, we talked about players coming in and how good transfer window were. I feel sorry, so I'm going to apologise to Callum, because we kind of like put him on what footnote to end it. We're like... So and so got Irby Kane, we got you know Matty James back, and then we just kind of went, oh, and Callum Britton signed as well. Well, I mean, Norris lads, we we messed up there. Callum Britton, best player we've signed for a while, if you ask me. Alan, what a laker! He's gonna. You were right. It, it made so much difference from Cardiff Tuesday night, and I said last week maybe they were just a bit tired at Cardiff on Tuesday night. But you said no, it's because Collie and Callum's Britton's missing, and you weren't wrong, mate. Honestly, it, it made such a difference on Saturday. Two players should make a big difference to our team, but it really does. And there again on Saturday, Cole is playing with a smile on his face and, and, and he had another good game. But Britain is just uh, on another level. And thank, thanks for finding him. I've no idea how we found him, but I'd never heard of him. But since he's uh, signed for us, he hasn't put a foot wrong. He's, he's solid. Uh, he can go forward. He can defend. Uh, he doesn't waste many balls. It's unbelievable, to be honest. Andy, we joke about the spreadsheet, you know, the Barnsley FC spreadsheet that's had its critics over the years, but tell you what, it's pulled out of Corker with Callum Britton. He's, he's a good player, isn't he? As Alka, Great Britain. He's done really, really... Thanks for nicking it from me, Alan. He's done, he's done really... He's done, he's done really well. The ball done well. I mean, I just wish that spreadsheet had say, we've got a tall striker here, a target man, so that when we play to upfield, it'll hold up. I don't know which spreadsheet is on that, but he's, he's, a, he's a good signing. Herbie Kane, not Harry Kane. Herbie Kane is a great signing as well. A great signing as well. So we've done Matty James on, on loan. Good signings. We've, we've done really well, apart from that one position. I think me and Smithy should take a bit, of, a bit of credit for that last win because we've been saying for a couple of weeks, stop tickling it. When you get in there, bait, stop tickling it. Stop trying to cut it back. Lash it. Put your... Put your boot, put it through your laces, smack it one. And what happens? We get two goals by our two strikers. Instead of passing it back to the goalkeeper, they've smacked it. Both of them smacked it. So it's down to Smithy, that. You know, hard and low, Andy. Right. Hard and low. What, yeah. what, if he, what if he breaks into the box and lashes it straight at the goal? You're going you're gonna to complain, aren't you? Said There's no finesse on I'm that. Not. It's not hard to finish. I'm not. No, no, no. And that's where you're wrong. It's you're, a practical you're advice for professional football. That's where you're face. wrong. Because, for me, if it's on target, Fucking we've been nonsense. used to them playing for we uh, Wakefield Trinity and it going over at bar. We've been used to them tapping it back to the goalkeeper as a back pass. And here, you, this is a back pass you can pick up. They've just started smacking it. Alex Mowat, a couple of matches now, he smacked it on Saturday. They've smacked it. And Victor, Victor has picked out the far corner. He's not just lashed it, he's picked it out. and He's, put it, he's placed it in the far corner. He's not just lashed also it. Also hit it. Alan, Alan has watched Victor Abbott. Uh, uh, <laughs> Adam Ayesio, if you needed a hand, and I'm sorry the Adam, 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 Adam. He's watched him from under 23s. So Alan's told me a number of times that this is a lad that can score goals. And yet, other week, you know, against Cardiff, in a perfect chance, he didn't shoot. Now, I'm hoping that, that last Saturday is going to be about confidence, both for, both for him and for Connor, because he played really, really well after he'd scored. So, you know, good luck to him because we know he can score. Uh, and, and maybe it's the start of things for Victor. Maybe it's, you know, when he were, come, when he were first coming on, thinking, you know, flipping it. What, what are we playing at here? And he proved me wrong. You know, he, he, as soon as he scored, 
he started holding the ball up. He hadn't before started holding the ball. He started playing like a striker like you want him to be. So, you know, who knows? We'll see, we'll see the next few matches, won't we? Well, I've Arian's got, clearly seen before. something in him. That's the thing. And let's, let's go on to that debate about Victor a bit more because some fans were critical. Some fans were saying when Blairian was coming out and saying, we didn't get another striker, obviously we wanted one, but we've got Victor. Some of the fans' reaction were, what do you mean? We've got some League Two striker who's looming going to be his backup. And that was you, Andy, and, and many other Reds fans as well. Oh, wow. And at that point, I kind of said, and this is not me saying I'm right and everything, because I'm definitely not. I kind of said, well, we've got to give him a chance. I'm not saying he's a world beater. We've got to give him a chance. And John, he's, he's got his chance. And like, like Andy says there, he's not F. Tucky, has he, with that lovely finesse, not put his foot through it, shot. You've got, to, you've got to give him a chance. But then I said the same for Patrick Smith. When he starts a game, he doesn't do well. So it's, it's, it's difficult to know. The question I've got is, and I don't know the answer, I, I prefer, I love Callum Styles. I prefer him in the middle with Clark Adora out on the left. So my question is, if we're going to play Matty James, Callum Styles, and Alex Mowat in the middle, Clark Adora on the left, can we just play with two strikers? Do we need three strikers? Because for me, if we had those three in the middle of the park, with this system, I mean, and then we had uh, Connor uh, and Corley up front, does it work with a pressing system, though? I don't know. Because that's the team I'd pick. I think Valerian's got his system, hasn't he? He seems to like it, so I don't know whether he's going to change that. I think the thing is with Callum Sells is... It, him being so good, it's kind, of, it's kind of his downfall as well, because he's, that, he's such a good footballer. For me, he's, I'm going to say it, I think he's the best footballer we've got. Um, alongside Callum Britton at the minute. Uh, obviously, we need to see more of Britton on a consistent basis, but I think Callum's right up there. Alan, I think it's just the fact he's playing fullback because you've got Matty James and Alex Mowat in middle. You don't want to drop one of those two. So it's kind of like, well, we've got to fit him in because he's one of the best footballers we've got. I mean, the turns he did against Derby, did you see that on the replay when he's just absolutely mugging everybody off? He's, ne he's next level. Way Rooney were on that pitch, and I'm thinking, he's not got a patch on blooming Callum Styles now. <laughs> I know he's at 35, like, but you know what I mean, Al? The confidence for a young lad is amazing. And as I say, he's very comfortable on the ball. Going back to his goal scorers, Vic, Victor scored on Saturday. Uh, the other one is that today, uh, the under-23s have beaten Charlton 5-0. George Miller's got a brace. Uh, Thomas has got one and uh, another two. So uh, it, it's not really bad for under-23s that, at the moment, they're putting ball in back at net. So let's see what happens and uh, we might get Miller on bench and we've got another striker. As I say, at, uh, well, when he came on a sub at Cardiff, uh, I think, was it Cardiff when he came on or game at home? He missed a chance, didn't he, when he come on? He, he snatched at it. Uh, so they've said that they're not looking for a striker in open market at the moment. So let's see what's happening with youngsters. Uh, Valerian might be fetching him on. Andy, do you think that the next step is obviously, well, with Victor, we know that now he's got to go on and kick on and he improve himself because he's, he's got that one goal and we can all say, yeah, that off to you, mate. We're fantastic and we are saying that, definitely. But he's got to prove it on a regular basis now. It's like a little bit like what John said about Patrick Smith. You know, Smith has come on and got some great goals, hasn't he, at crucial times last season. But then when you give him 90 minutes, it's you can hardly see him sometimes, you know what I mean? He's not had the same impact. And, I th you know, games do pass strikers by, but it, I think for both of those lads, it's now about trying to get consistent with the goal scoring, I think. I'm hoping that his goal is going to give him the confidence that he needs because there's been times when he's come on of this last year or so and he's just, he's just plodded about. He's, he's, you know, he looks six foot one when he's going up to edit and five foot three when he actually gets to edit. Um, so he's not... He's not it, He's not not been winning stuff in the air, and he's not been holding it up. You know the, the balls bounced off him. You know if, if you're gonna have a, if you're gonna have a strike, you need somebody that can hold it up. You know other teams have, have players that hold the ball up, and it relieves the defence and midfield a bit. Lets the midfield join up with it, and he's not been doing that at all. He wasn't doing that when he came on. Then he scored, and then he started doing it. So it's got to be about confidence. You know, a couple of seasons ago, he started like a house on fire. You think is the new is the next big thing. And then he faded and he finished up out going out on loan. So I'm hoping that um, that it's a confidence thing and he's going to get he's, he's going to get better with it. Uh, he's, he's got to hold he's got to hold it up better and he's got to keep going doing what he's, he did towards the end of that match and you know sharpen it up and hold the ball up and shoot. 
and you know let, let, let's hope let's hope is what we need so let's assess moving on from the derby game obviously fantastic result for the Reds but let's assess Valerian Ismail's first spell in charge if you like because at first little period in charge should I say because we're going into the international break so we've got a little bit of time of, time of reflection now for us all to just soak it all up and talk about the start to the season well first thing to say is we're doing a lot blooming better than we were at this point last season because I think if I remember rightly we'd, we'd beat Fulham and that were about it um Al four games for Valerian one three three clean sheets just the blip at Cardiff, which was a big blip because we lost 3-0 and we were terrible. But apart from that, everything's been a positive. Can we Progress, get a little bit excited this guy's got it? Or is it just a manager bounce like John said? No, we didn't know anything about him. He's come in, he's, uh, he's changed it all and uh, everything's going swimmingly, isn't it? And uh, it took us 21 games last season to get on points what we've got now. So at the end of the day, we've, well, we had nine games and we've got uh, the points. Can I just say, we, we've already discussed Alan Smith's facts are not always correct, so don't take word for that. I'd have to check that. Andy, can you check that step? Go up. Sorry, what are you saying? I'm, I'm going to check it because it's the red all over version of flipping Donald Trump him. Fake news, Smithy. I hope you're right. This I thought it were 11 games, Smithy. I thought, but I could be wrong because I don't know what I'm talking about, unlike you. No, you'll get it wrong. You need shape up, Alan. That's all I'm saying. Shape no, up. Can I, tell you, can I just give you a bit of insight? After, we, after a match at Oakwell, when we're actually going to the game, we always say Smithy on the way out of the ground, sat in his, in his car. They're really nice to each other. You're right, Al. Yeah, I'm all right, pal. You enjoy that well, you know, you're all right, weren't it? See you later. See you next week. When they come on here, it's all for show. It's not real. <laughs> it's oh, real. we're all friends, are they? Oh, we friends in real life. This is yeah. how I see it. When, when, when we've won, we're all smiles. When we've lost and, and we meet up with Smithy in his car, he kicks off. He's kicking off. So I'm just glad that we don't do a show immediately after the match because Smithy kicks off if we've lost. By by the time he's come round to, well, Monday this time, but often Tuesday, well, he's calmed his send down a bit. So he's, he's usually up and at him. So, you know. He's, don't believe he's, the hype. Don't it's, believe it's him. It's his age. It's to his be age. fair, though, when we did get, we did read all over show instantly after Cardiff, that were a bad idea from me. I don't know why I bothered with that. <laughs> Blooming orders, they were both up in arms and we had Blooming up in arms. We had Blooming odds, odds. Mild swear word. I couldn't believe it last week. I mean, I'm glad we're all cheery now, but I've given them time to calm down after Derby win, so it's all right. But it worked though, oh, didn't it, Joe? When I go, when I see Smithy at games, I have a slightly different view. He's not necessarily negative. He's not necessarily positive, but it tends to be all right, Joe. It's your round, and then I just go to bar at Mount or Garrison, and that's it. I'm buying pints. Well, I've got to be paid somehow, ain't I? I mean, I know I've got my Dane FM uh, fleecy, which uh, Andy says he ain't got no. But what I mean, that's antique now, isn't it? Yeah. Mate, it'll be worse like you, that. Alan. Keep holding it. Dane FM in 20 years, they'll be flogging that. They'll be asking me for more of them pens I've got up in loft. <laughs> that's an antique, Al, just like you, an antique. Right, lads, back on footy then. So, yeah, I know you'd have loads of them blooming pens hanging about. I've got them everywhere. Um, back on football. So Valerian, we're impressed. Are we impressed, Andy, or what? I think he's done all right, hasn't he? I mean, we, well, one thing I did like, I mean, I, I was asked about it the other day, and we got we're talking about, um, what, what's it called, vertical football. I've absolutely no idea what it means. If it means, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it means, unless it means that we don't, we don't lie down. I have no idea. What I do think is that we started, we did, we did it against, uh, against Cardiff, which were a mistake. We've just started not to hit eyeballs up to small players. So that can only be a benefit. And certainly against Derby, we got the ball forward a lot, lot quicker than we have been doing, you know, uh, earlier on this season. We, we, when we got possession, you know, we fought and fought possession, then slowed it all down. So, you know, the, the, there is the, you know, there is the thing, and John will say, you know, about Barcelona and what have you, that the opposition can't score if you've got the ball. Well, you know, some, sometimes we scored it for them last season, but generally they can't score if you've got the ball. But we, so we're getting it forward a bit quicker. And, and that's, I think that's a good thing. Um, we, we've not got possession, you know, we've not had possession as much and it does come back a bit too quickly for me. But, you know, three, three wins, you know, three wins out of four matches, one debacle, but... You know the other matches we've done. You know we've done all right. We we had a, Watford had the chances. You know I think uh, Jack Walton spent a lot of time diving out, cutting out crosses from their right wing. Um, but we did them. You know and 
that they've got whatever it costs. I mean, I saw, and I'm not saying this is a start, so I'm not going to fact check this because this might be wrong. But their squad costs something like hundred million, which is a ridiculous amount of money outside of what you know what we put up with. Um, so we've got, you know, we've got, we, we're going to have times when opposition looks like scoring. Derby looked like they could have scored. Jack Walton played a blinder again. What a goalkeeper! So three matches out of four, we've won. We've not just we've won. So. And that's with him not having much time with the players, you know, a day here, a couple of days there. Like you said, Joe, he's now got a fortnight to get his prop, you know, to, to get his ideas fully over and get them, you know, fully on board and work with them. So, you know, hopefully it'll go well next, you know, in, in a fortnight. John, I think that you've got to get the ball forward quickly, but there's a difference between playing a long ball and getting the ball forward quickly. So effectively, I guess you're trying to move the ball quickly rather than just passing it for the sake of passing it. But the ball still needs to stick up the other end. You know, you still need to get it forward quickly, but not sometimes. And I don't want to criticise Mads because I think he's been really good. And he's hit a couple of really good long balls too. But sometimes he looks up and he plays a long ball and you think, I don't know who he's passing that to. And that's just playing a long ball. That's not vertical football. So it's how do you pass through the midfield? Um, which is why I'm thinking, I don't want to crowd it out. But when you've got a Callum style spinning on a, on a sixpence and, you know, creating space... And then obviously Matty James, you know, with positional sense, maybe passing the ball through the midfield and then having that two pronged attack might work. But again, you know, he knows his own tactics better than me, so I don't know. I think the only criticism from me is we just need to be a little bit more clinical with the chances. At the minute, we're not conceding goals apart from Cardiff, but we're not conceding many goals, keeping clean sheets. Considering where we were 12 months ago in terms of defence. It's just unreal to even think. If you'd have said to us all 12 months ago, Mads Anderson's going to be probably your best defender and you're going to be keeping clean sheets week in, week out, I think we'd have all probably been like, what? You know what I mean? So that just shows, you know, we've said it before on the show, but amazing Mads and keep up the great work, mate. Um, and I saw that he's, he's been talk, chatting about hoping to get that call up for Denmark at some point. Oh, he deserves that, doesn't he? Oh, he deserves that. He does. He's grown into it, hasn't he? And it's that infectious smile. You can't get stop mad smile. It's just infectious. Uh, but going back to our, our goal, our second goal, if that had been in Premiership, the fact that we passed it through needles to get it, one, two, ping, pong, ping, ping, and to get it in, they'd have been talking about that. What's, what a goal that is. I mean, the five passes that we had to score a goal, unbelievable to get through a derby side. Oh, well, don't forget... Uh, when Rooney, we moved it to uh, off 2nd of January and Rooney's first game for for Derby were moved because they weren't registered. I mean, all we heard on that night were Rooney, Rooney, Rooney. Didn't we put Rooney to bed? Didn't we put him to bed? I mean, it's crikey, he might as well have gone in goal. To be honest, no, I didn't even recognise you were playing, so, you know. <laughs> so, so, I don't know. They moved him back into midfield, didn't they? Because he wasn't getting any ball and... and we were controlling the midfield, so we literally moved him back for that reason. So we forced them to move Wayne Rooney around. So that's that's you know it's only a good thing, isn't it? We've talked we've talked lots of times about. Uh, I know we've just been talking about Mads Anderson being a much improved defender. We've talked about Michael Solbauer being a really good defender, and he made the difference. He, he, he one of the reasons we stayed up last year. So you know, well done to him, Michael Helly. Now I'm going to gear I'm going to gear a Smithy start, but it's not from Smithy. It's, yeah, yes, you can smile. Yes, yes, you can smile. Yeah, this is from, I think, from Leon, Leon Wabshaw from um, Yorkshire Post. He says, so it's... it's off. What's <laughs> it's off. that? I know. I, 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 you know, you can't... Hey, you can't. Wait, sorry, it's a shame. Off, but what is that? It's a shame. Such a shame. I never wanted to say this on this show, but give us a ball. No, don't. Don't say it. I can't, don't. Joe. No, 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 no. Don't say it, Joe, for goodness. Right. Does it actually so, make Michael noise? Hellick, According to Leon, there's been tw 29 central defenders in, in the championship this season, and Michael Hellick is the only centre back that has not had anybody dribble past him. Nobody's gone past him. So that's, you know, that, that's, that shows that he's been a really good defender. We had an aberration for their first goal against Cardiff, but what, what a player he's turning out to be. Them three together at the back, making a big difference. That's because he pulls them down if they try to go past him. Have you seen? <laughs> He's always getting yellow cards. No, you, yeah. you can't. You can't just let a player take a compliment, you Joe, can you? You know, we build them up, and you have to pull them. You're I supposed to be, be happy, clapping. I really don't. You're supposed like to be glad he's pure. 
I really I'm so glad it's Bill. You're that. supposed to be up there. It's not You're me pulling being people Ellen. down. Listen to me for a second. They said that about Virgil van Dyke. About I don't know. They said he'd gone like whatever it was. Two seasons without blooming having anybody drill. But I'm not being funny. People get past it. It's not about that. If you're conceding, if you, how many goals you concede, that's what you want to judge it on. If as a team you keep clean sheets week in week out, banging, that's great. I don't give a two oops about you know whether somebody's dribbled past somebody because there's other variations with that. You know, he might not drill past Elik, but if Elik's not marked from other side and he's drilled past Anderson, it's still as bad. Not saying that that happens. I'm just simply saying that I don't like the stats um, in that respect. That's just my opinion. But thank you for sharing, Andy, as always. Well, Valerian, he had all the players in. He's had them all individually into his office and spoken to them all individually. So he's really, really got to know the players. He's got to understand them, probably. And, I mean... How they work, you're not training. I mean, I'm missing going and watching training days and, and seeing, seeing how his, uh, what his style is. Uh, because uh, tw- what it, four years ago today, when uh, we, we went to watch training, it was snowing. They were training in snow. At least we ain't got snow at the moment. But no, it's, 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 I, th- I think he's going to do all right for us. And uh, he's got this three-year deal. And I think we're going to go, not, not places yet, but I think we're going in the right direction. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to get Big Kev on and then we're going to talk more about the, because we're going to get his prediction and his thoughts on uh, on Derby and then we'll get his prediction um, for the next game after the international break and then we'll uh, finish up and just have a chat. I've had the running out time warning on Zoom, so we best, best be quick. We'll get Big Kev on now and he can give us his prediction for Nottingham Forest at home. Right then, Big Kev, what do we reckon? Beat Derby 2-0, you've got to be positive tonight. It's got to be positive tonight. Tony, we've, we've won 2-0 against Derby. Bounce back from that 3 0 defeat to Cardiff. Come on, Big Kev, what were your thoughts? It were a good, it were a good win. I mean, uh, I wish we could play with that goalie of theirs every week. I mean, he's brilliant. Tim has uh, got wrong coloured shirt on, didn't he? Well, that's the first one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he comes down to about a second, second were a good goal. I mean, uh, if that lad can start sticking some of them up front, we'd be uh, laughing, wouldn't we? I love how you've called him that lad because he can't pronounce Victor Adebayo, which I've been practicing a lot. To be fair, is it hard? Well, I didn't want to get. I didn't want to well, call him Mick because I didn't want to get his name wrong and sound like an idiot, which I do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're happy? Any um, knowing you, there'll always be room for improvement. Knowing Big Kev, come on then. What what can we? What did you? Th- same thing. I'll tell you what. I'll, well, yeah, of course there is. Because at the end of the day, it was same old kettle of fish. Last third, finishing. But you know what I mean. We just. You know what I mean? Chances we 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 get we pass balls to wrong players. We uh, shots are wrong, or the summer just not quite right. We're not kicking on. I mean, we should have been three, four goals again. I mean, it's you know what I mean. Goal gave us one, and we made a good goal, but we didn't actually get a goal from us from us from us good football. We played well, good football about and second we goal. We're a good team goal. You've got to give them credit for that because. It's played out from back. Connor Chaplin, we had a right ball to Vic, and Vic's, like I said, buried. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm trying to get over is like when we play out wide and we get into the box, if we pick the right player out and he, and he does the right shot, we'll get three or four goals every game because we make them chances. But we're not picking the right player out, and the player, when he gets it, he's not finishing. It's always been a sort of a cock up or a mistake or a, a missed shot. But we've got to improve that side of his football. We need to be practicing. When we get ball in that area, first time shot, and it's got to go in. It's not going to go wide. He's got to make him have a save. We've been talking on show tonight about Victor. Obviously, great goal from him, but some fans have you know, said before, oh, what are we doing with this lead two striker, as they've sort of named him before, is this goal. Do you think he, he obviously deserves his chance, but do you think he's, you know, he, he could make it? He could be a decent player for us? Well, you only I need to look at Ollie Watkins. You know what I mean? He's gone from Championship, and look where Aston Villa are now. If you give him a chance and he starts scoring goals and he gets confidence, you don't know what sort of strike he could turn out to be. He could be next Ollie Watkins. Oh, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? He could be on his back to non league. <laughs> but he deserves a chance. Yeah, yeah he deserves yeah. a chance. We'll yeah. see We'll see how he goes. I mean, like I say, they've given enough chances to, to other strikers. I mean, there's been a few of them that's misfiring or they haven't even they haven't scored. I mean, we need to be getting a lot more goals in this league um, and, and finishing properly. You don't get. You get so many chances in a game, and if you don't put them away, then you're not going to win your games. And let's move on to prediction. Nottingham Forest at home after the international break. Remember to uh, put your predictions in the comments, which I'll keep plugging throughout the show. 
Big Kev, are we uh, going to get another win, another clean sheet against Nottingham Forest? Well, we look where they are, and on paper we should win this. On paper we should win it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go for two one win to Barnsley. Uh, I mean, all problem is with home games. He don't he don't count anymore. You know, if in olden days this this would have been an home game with crowd behind Barnsley, we would have won this. But we know crowd is it's just like a neutral ground, so. Uh, Makes me very sad that you're referring to the time with fans as olden days, because you know that shows how long experiences we've been to all well. Sadly, it's kind of funny in a sense, but not in the sense that we want to get that back there. So well, I, for I forgot our bad pies are. <laughs> <laughs> right, so that's what Big Kev thinks to his prediction for Nottingham Forest at home, which is obviously coming up after the international break. Uh, so there'll just be this red all over between now and then. So your predictions, as usual, just go in the comments. Make sure you keep predicting. Uh, we'll get the leaderboard up at some point in the near future. If you follow me on Twitter, you can see it on there. That I will try and put it on the show. So keep your predictions coming in. And we need to catch Big Kev. So keep doing that. That's good. Uh, right. Lads, my tea's ready and Zoom's running out. So this is going to be a quick one to finish. Um, before we do his predictions, one last question to you all. Um, I wanted to ask you about perceptions. Do you feel that this perception of Barnsley in-house, so from everybody, of Barnsley are a little club, can start to change now a little bit in terms of championship. Because before, it's always all Barns little, little old Barnsley, it seems like Barnsley, you know what I mean? I think there's a big thing now that we need to start as a team, as fans, as Valerian Ismail, the manager, and all the coaching staff, start changing that perception that we're not a little club, we're just here to just maybe, if we're lucky, stop up. We need to start thinking more than that now and start thinking, we deserve to be here. We are a championship team. We proved, all right, we stopped at Mike Skinner's teeth last year, but we're already doing pretty decent this year so far, considering Struber went, all uncertainty. Alan, can we change the perception? Do you think teams are going to start thinking Barnsley are with us, you know, we're with us place at Championship after his uh, recent results, if we keep going? Well, teams will be thinking Barnsley's a uh, team to be, be worried about, but it's the fans' perception. It's not. It's not the football teams. It's it's the fans, and we'll always be teams like Barnsley because everybody expects that that they can beat us. But at the end of the day, that's good for us because uh, in your face, isn't it? End of the day, we we're proving them wrong. We're not to teams like Barnsley. We're getting better. We're progressing, and we know where we want to be, and we know what the heights that we want to reach. Andy, what do you reckon to this? Because I just feel like. Sometimes when we get chances, when we're through on goal, we're a bit tentative. And it might be totally not to do with what I'm speaking about, but I think it's because sometimes it's almost like, oh, we've got a chance. Like, whereas top championship teams, when they get chances, they think, yeah, I'm scoring. We're here to win. We're here to score. Whereas sometimes I feel like we do have days where we'll get a chance. There was one against Derby, and although the performance was fantastic, I'm not criticising, where Connor Chaplin got the ball, again, he had a fantastic game, so not criticising too much. And... Um, Carly's across, and I'm just thinking, just just go, just go straight at him. And if if Carly's there for the easy tapping, go for it. Or like you always say, smash it. Instead, he's tried to. It's almost like he didn't really know what to do with it. He's tried to half play it, half I don't know. Tried to play it up at top, and then goalkeepers just caught it. And they're the sort of chances where I'm thinking, if we could just get that mentality that we are a top championship team, we can be a top championship team. We can, you know what I mean. We'll, we might start taking them chances, being a bit more ruthless. What do you think? I mean, you've got to remember, Joe, you're a young'un, so you'll, th you'll think that sort of way. I ain't got a problem with other teams, other clubs thinking teams like Barnsley because they'll underestimate us. And what you have to remember, and I've always instilled in John, I'll be interested to see what he says in a minute, me and Smithy, all the years, when we've been doing well, we've been brought up with things, with people saying, old folks, that we now are. When we were younger, there were old folks, and now it's me and Alan saying, they don't want it. They don't want us to go up. We can't afford it. They don't want it. And I've told Jonathan that for years. I was gobsmacked when we went up into Premier League. And that was even before we beat Fulham in first match of the season. So I'm amazed that we, when we went up, because they don't... Uh, all that season, I was saying, they don't want it, because they'd have to pay more money. So, you know, let's hope they do it. Let's hope they do want it. Let's hope we can do better. But, you know, let them underestimate us. I don't, I don't care. As long as okay. our mindset, as long as our mindset's better, let That's other people saying. have the mindset. That's what I'm saying. John, that's what yeah, I'm trying to say. I'm not saying necessarily the mindset of other clubs, because we can't change that. They'll always see us as team, you know, oh, we lost to a team like Barnsley. We're always going to be that. But from in-house, 
I believe that us as fans and also mainly the players and the coach, and the coach might already think like this, we've got to start believing in ourselves more and having faith that we are a top champ, a good championship team that we're going to be in this league next season and for seasons to come, and we're going to start challenging. This season, mid-table's fine, but going forward, we need to start looking up and not down. What, what do you think to that, John? What you've got to remember, what you've got to remember Joe, is that you're you, you have to set... I'm going to tell you this. We have percent. I'll let him speak in a minute. We have perceptions of other clubs. Like Jonathan, for the first 10 years of his life, Jonathan thought they were called Sheffield Wednesday nil because I instilled it in him. So now, nah, off you go, John. Okay, so we've got to do his predictions. Let him speak. I thought you were a bit good with me then. Um, I think there were times last season, for example, where I didn't think we were going to stop up. And I know you stayed positive, Joe. I didn't. But I looked at players like Alex Mowat. And I thought, there's someone who truly believes is going to drag us to safety. I don't think he's going to do it, <laughs> but he thinks he's going to do it. And I think the more of those kind of players we've got, and I think the strike, we just need that from the strikers. I think Victor scoring a goal. I think Connor Chaplin scoring a goal. Corley getting back into some good form. I think as soon as the strikers start popping him in. Do you remember um, Connor Chaplin last year? You're thinking, oh, I'm not sure if he's... what are And then he suddenly bangs a load, load of goals in, in in like three or four games and you think... There you go. That's confidence. So I think it's more of a confidence thing than a small club mentality, maybe. Um, but, but yeah, do, do, if the question is, do the players think they deserve to be in this league? I think they're probably starting to believe that, yeah, they're actually a, a championship quality outfit and maybe start looking towards the playoffs rather than below. Yeah, I'm not trying to get giddy. Maybe. I'm just saying I just want us to have the mentality... <laughs> That, oh, just because last season we were struggling, we don't need to think that this season and we can take us chances and, like you said, confidence. Right, we've got three minutes before Zoom kicks us off. Oh, the technology. Um, let's do as a oh, quick plug. Please give us a thumbs up as usual if you're enjoying the show and click subscribe and get your friends subscribed so we can keep building the channel. There we go, that's out of the way. Oh, and if you want to come on Red All Over, as you'll notice, John's uh, first appearance, we are looking for more fans to join us. Um, so, you know... Feel free to drop me a message if you're interested and we'll see if we can get you on at some point. Quick predictions. Alan, I'll come to you first. What are you thinking? Nottingham Forest. It's behind me, 2-0. 2-0 to the Reds. Yeah. As in Barnsley, not Forest, because they also play in Reds. Uh, don't let me say anything about North Forest. Andy? Well, I've got to be careful. What, what you don't know is that, well, you might know, Cheryl, Cheryl Gray wouldn't go for 2-0 last match because I went for it so I'm like a YouTube influencer now Cheryl went to loss of 3-0 rather than 2-0 because of me so I'm going to go back to my old ways I'm going back to 2-1 Andy we're going to win 2-1 but they've got some good strikers you know Lyle Taylor Joe Lolly Lyle Taylor you watch Joe Lolly. you watch Lyle Taylor anywhere near box in box he'll go down like a good one you watch for it 2-1 John what are we thinking I'm going 3-1 to, to Barnsley. 3-1. I've got, yeah. I, I, every, every time I predict us to win, we're rubbish. And every time I, I, I'm trying to be a bit more realistic, we're going not, not two or three goals in. So, I'm going 3-1. The go logic says we're going to lose, man. Right. <laughs> I'm going to go for 1-0. So, that's been read all over. Again, thank you for watching and uh, give us a thumbs up. And I'm off for me uh, bangers and mash. So, we'll see, you. we'll see you after the international break. You Reds. <laughs>